Hello, hello. I'm just uh, hoping to give a little update on the Iceland situation. The uh, eruption that commenced yesterday, uh, April 1st, seems to have calmed down. Let me quickly share my screen. And uh, here we are. So here we are, and here is the area that was affected, and there is a little bit of smoke coming out. Now the camera seems to have a little bit of trouble, but here it is, but there is no uh, fire fountains and fissures and things like that. But uh, the, the real issue is actually that uh, the eruption yesterday was breaking through the barriers, and here is a little bit of uh, information. Actually, let's start with this. This is a photo posted by Diana. She's a PhD student at the University of Iceland, and she's part of the research team I'm working with. And here you see the fissure, and the fissure has gone under the barrier. It's been partly breaking up the barrier, and there was lava eruption inside uh, the protective barrier, so very close to Grindavik here. And uh, this is, of course, a bit of an issue. And here's a bit of footage that comes from the uh, Reykjavik grapevine and uh, I just want to kind of go through here and here you can see this so uh, here you have oops that's not so good one second so here we have the fisher and here's Grindavik town and there's the barrier here and uh, it's now going through this area inside the protected area and this is of course the problem and uh, let's go a little further I think they had some really interesting footage here at the end. So here is the barrier, you can drive on the barrier. This is a greenhouse, this building, and there you see the eruption inside the protective area. So the realization is these barriers are, they're good for diverting lava, but they're not good for, well, determining where vents will come up. And that of course is no safety measure here. So the vents can pop up anywhere along this line now. And I'll talk a little more about this later. But uh, here, uh, this is the old lava from January um, um, 24. And here is the new lava. So it seems to uh, connect up. So we actually have the early 25 lavas up here and the early 24 lavas here. Soon, they may actually connect in case the eruptive activity continues so and uh, then uh, let's see here is a bit of footage from uh, the eruption the fissure from yesterday from April 1st and here you see the broken barrier or the undermined barrier is probably the better word because the top is still there and uh, this is of course a bit of an issue here. Here's a zoom in shot there the barrier starts to disintegrate here but the top is still uh, intact. I wouldn't want to drive on it though, but uh, yeah, I guess you get the idea. So, and lava is therefore emitted on either side of the barrier. So, and here we have a similar drone shot where the fracture has just opened or has just propagated to the other side of the barrier. Here the lava is already accumulating and uh, this is now continuing. You see that first there's the uh, the volatiles are coming out and then the fracture is cracking it up and then we have more magma coming out. So this was from earlier uh, yesterday and then it actually migrated forth and produced more lava inside the barrier. This is older lava. And uh, this is how we saw the eruption yesterday. Now, let me stop this as well. Here you see once more the fracture underneath the barrier. Fascinating. But what I really want to kind of discuss here right now is that there is uh, the message here from the Icelandic Met Office. One um, disconcerting kind of aspect here is that here we have the map and this is the fissure and the fissure has now opened up and there's a few small fissures and these two lava fields might actually connect up. The lava up here seems to be diverted successfully, but what happens here, that's going to be very challenging. In theory, more barriers could be put in, but I don't know what the time is sufficient for this and uh, let's go back here what I also want to show is this map here and this is actually more troublesome because 
beyond the fissure to the north and the uh, northeast in particular, we now have earthquakes migrating far further north than ever before. And uh, the earthquakes are close to uh, the uh, main road here that connects Reykjavik with Keflavik airport. And if earthquakes will destroy that road or if eruptions actually come up and hit the road here, if the fissures were to continue here and would interrupt the road, then logistically this would be a bit of a nightmare. We already had more broken water pipes yesterday. And um, this, of course, is a bit of an issue. And uh, I think infrastructure may be suffering if this continues. The inflation is uh, unfortunately uh, still there with the, the eruption volume was too little yesterday and uh, let me go down here there was one now I can't see it now but the eruption volume was too little yesterday in order to ensure that the magma reservoir under Swartz Engie is actually empty so I think uh, if the accumulation continues uh, we will have more eruptions probably small ones short ones but they were between days and weeks in the past this is the 11th eruption on the Reykjans Peninsula in the last three years I think we're in for more eruptions of this nature. The big question that now needs to be discussed, and it's a difficult conversation to have, but the question that needs to be discussed is, is Brindavik actually, well, lost, or can we save it? We might pour a lot of money into that, uh, but it may have no um, positive outcome. The it may have no avail. The uh, town may be lost if the fissures continue spreading further south, if magma vents go further south, if the earthquakes continue to damage this, then we may be fixing, we may be putting a lot of good money in, but it may actually not have the final outcome that we desire. So, hard stuff to think about, and I close here and I say thank you very much for your time and attention. Bye-bye.